introduction of guests. Therefore, it is time for member statements. The member from Prince Edward Hastings. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and we welcome our sick friends to the Legislature again today. I'm very pleased to be able to celebrate Sick Heritage Month in Ontario. In my four years as a PC Caucus Outreach Chair, I've had the personal experience of getting to know firsthand the many contributions of Ontario's sick community, many of those community members I now call close friends. <laughs> Canadians of Sick Heritage play a vital role in our society. A few years ago, Mr. Speaker, I had the opportunity to take my wife and my two daughters along with me to a Gurdwara in Brampton. My family and I were given an education into the tenets of the Sikh faith and the value of Sikh culture. We were welcomed in with open arms. We had the opportunity to participate in their prayers and sample some food from the kitchen at the mission. It was on that day I learned that a hungry person in the community is always given a meal from the kitchen of a Sikh temple. They're open 24 hours a day. The Sikh community is always there to help. It doesn't matter if you're a member of the Sikh community or someone rolling in off the street that needs help. April was specifically chosen for Sikh Heritage Month given its importance for Sikhs, as it is April that Sikh Canadians celebrate Visakhi, which marks the formalization of the Khalsa and the Sikh Articles of Faith. Sikh Heritage Month is an opportunity to remember, celebrate, and educate our future generations and society at large about the important role that Sikh Canadians are playing in communities across Ontario. I look forward to joining many of my Sikh friends again next weekend as tens of thousands of Sikhs gather at Nagar Curtains to walk from Exhibition Place to Nathan Phillips Square in downtown Toronto this coming Sunday and again the following weekend up in Malton as we celebrate the Khalsa Day Parade there. Waheguru Jika Khalsa, Waheguru Jiki Fateh. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member from Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. April is Be a Donor Month in support of organ and tissue donation in Ontario. And as the first flowers bloom on the front lawn here at Queen's Park, what better time than now to celebrate renewal and the gift of life? Speaker, as I look around the room, I imagine that many of our colleagues have been touched by organ donation, just as so many families across Ontario have. Last year, 1,086 individuals in Ontario received a life-saving organ transplant, 46 of which were children or youth. That's over 1,000 families that will get to continue to spend time with a loved one that they would otherwise have lost if it were not for the generosity of organ donors. My family lost my aunt, Kath, a few years ago unexpectedly. And, in the, and the fact that she was an organ donor gave us something to focus on in a time of such senseless loss. We were able to take heart in knowing that other families were so positively impacted by my aunt even after she was gone. Speaker, one organ donor can save eight lives, and when you factor in the family members, friends, co-workers, and loved ones of those recipients, you realize that a single donation can touch thousands. It is our in our family's time of loss, it was comforting to know that my aunt had been able to give hope to so many others in their time of need. For those families, it meant a second chance. So visit beadonor.ca, speak to your loved ones, and consider registering. Like my aunt, I am also an organ donor. I ask that you join me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to uh, stand here today to give praise to uh, all of our Ontario farmers, especially our tomato farmers, as you know, uh, as a result of the ketchup wars, that uh, Ontario farmers are now planting in uh, bigger numbers than they ever did before because there is a huge international demand for locally grown Ontario tomatoes. And the member from Essex knows this full well, that people care passionately about locally grown vegetables. They care passionately about locally grown fruit. They care passionately about local jobs. And that's why everybody stood in their place and said, we support local jobs. We support the uh, new expansion of uh, ketchup production in Ontario because it means more jobs, more healthy local fruit and vegetables. And as you know, uh, French's uh, ketchup is now seeking to expand into a new bottling plant to meet the demand for ketchup. And also Primo Foods, that old venerable Italian company, believe it or not, Mr. Speaker, is going to produce all Canadian ketchup. So more jobs, more ketchup, more tomatoes, everything is good on the farm in Ontario. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements. 
The member from Dufferin Caledon. Thank you, Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today to recognize April as Be a Donor Month, the time to celebrate organ and tissue donation and transplantation. Being a donor is an easy way for an individual to give back. It truly is giving the gift of life to another one who needs it the most. I want to take a moment to recognize the efforts of Ontario Lions Clubs uh, across Ontario who are raising awareness for issue and tissue donor registration. I also want to recognize the great work taking place at the Trillium Gift of Life, life Network, who are working tirelessly to help give the gift of life. Last year, Trillium Gift of Life Network surpassed their registration goal by having more than 250,000 Ontarians register. Now there are approximately 3.4 million Ontarians registered to be a donor, but there is still a lot of work that can be done. While there are 3.5 million Ontarians res registered, there are still approximately 8.5 million eligible Ontarians who have not. Every registration makes a difference. One donor can save up to eight lives and enhance as many as 75 through tissue donation. There are still 1,600 Ontarians waiting for that gift of life, and sadly, one person dies every three days waiting for that transplant. Anyone 16 years of older with an Ontario health card can register to be a donor. So please visit beadonor.ca, take the two minutes to register, and give the gift of life but make sure you share your wishes with your family. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Welland. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, today, I want to thank 100 community members, environmental experts, and academics who joined me for a biodiversity offsetting roundtable in my riding yesterday afternoon. During a trade mission to China last fall, the Premier signed an MOU for a China-based company, GR Investments, to develop on over 13 acres of provincially significant and protected wetlands in the Niagara region, the majority of which fall in my riding. To circumvent wetland conservation laws, the government is proposing, through a white paper, uh, a pilot project called biodiversity offsetting, where wetlands destroyed in this process will be recreated elsewhere. In principle, it sounds good, but the scientific evidence says otherwise. Worse, it's getting the go-ahead from the Liberal government keen to see this pilot project for future investment by the Chinese in Ontario as a no-net-loss policy. Mr. Speaker, call it what you will. We know that no net loss is another example of liberal jargon, and my community is disturbed and troubled by the government's disregard for environmental priorities in my riding. We know that no net loss will have disastrous impacts on our ecosystem. To be clear, development is an important part of the region's growth. We value jobs, development, and we certainly uh, value economic growth. As legislators, we have an obligation to make sure the pursuit of development is always balanced with the protection of our ecosystems, especially those that are deemed provincially significant. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Barrie. Thank you, Speaker. As this is the Trillium Gift of Life Network's Be a Donor Mo Month, I would like to take this opportunity to tell the story of Jocelyn Lee Worthy from my riding of Barrie, who courageously volunteered to be a live organ donor at only 19 years old. A member of Jocelyn's family fell very ill and potentially in need of a transplant. While this person went on to make a full recovery on her own, the idea of being a live donor was still in Jocelyn's mind. In June, she began volunteering at Sick Kids, where she saw firsthand how illness impacted children and their families. Resolved to give a child a second chance, she began her work up at Toronto General Hospital's Living Donor Program. After several months of screening and tests, she finally was scheduled for surgery this past October to donate the left lobe of her liver. She was not without fears, but knowing what she was doing would help a child, it made it worth it. Afterwards, the doctor explained that her liver went to an infant and it worked beautifully. Jocelyn has peace of mind knowing that she was able to change a family's life for the better. Speaker, 85% of Ontarians support organ donor donations, yet only 29% are actually registered. Over 1,500 people in this province are currently waiting for an organ transplant. It is both vital and easy to register at beadonor.ca. Everyone should find the courage that Jocelyn found to be a donor. Thank you. 
Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Sonia Lampton. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, April marks the unofficial beginning of the digging season in Canada. Such, I rise today to recognize April as National Dig Safe Month. Each digging season, underground infrastructure such as natural gas lines, electrical lines, telecommunication lines are jeopardized or damaged because of the failure to take a simple but important safety step, having locates completed before starting an excavation project. Getting locates is now simpler than ever. The Ontario One Call system allows homeowners and contractors alike to click online or call for locates before they dig. This quick but important step can prevent injuries, avoid property damage, and reduce the inconvenience of outages. The Provincial One Call system was created by the Ontario Inf Underground Infrastructure Notification Act, which I co sponsor with my colleague, the MPP from Hamilton East, Stony Creek. The One Call system is available, Mr. Speaker, to take locate requests 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 365 days of the year. Already, Ontario One Call is taking over 1 million requests a year, 700,000 by the web, and over 300,000 by phone. It takes, on average, five minutes to submit a request, whether you do it by telephone or online. Ontario One Call is very easy to use and an effective tool that is offered free of charge. It takes a moment at the beginning of a project, but it can help avoid big problems down the road. Remember, call or click before you dig. I don't like having my cable cut either. So. Further uh, member statements. The member from uh, Brampton, Brampton, Springdale. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to celebrate the Harvest Festival of Basaki, that which is also the founding of the Sikh community known as the Khalsa, and the basic Sikh belief that is re represented by the phrase Ikumkar, meaning one God. Sikhism was founded by the 10th Guru, uh, Guru Gobind Singh Ji, in 1699 with the introduction of the Panj Kakar, or the five Ks, that are the five articles of faith that the Khalsa Sikhs wear at all times. He prayed for equality, truthfulness, tolerance, honesty, brotherhood, and respect for all. Sikhism is a major world religion which, with origins that trace back to the 15th century. Guru Nanak Dev Ji had initially laid the foundation for a distinct community that started Sikhism as a social revolution and faith, uh, faith based on principles of equality and social justice. The Sikh community is based on fundamentals including faith, unity, and equality for all. I personally believe in a valued fundamental of Sikhism close to my heart, Seva. Engaging in self-service called Seva. It means selfless service completed as a community, as a community action that is done for the goodwill and the benefit of others. The concept of seva, though, is more than all, more than all of these things. It is the true. It's the very essence of Sikhism. Sikh Canadians have lived in Ontario since the middle of the 20th century and represent a growing and dynamic population, making significant contributions to the growth and prosperity of Ontario. I am proud to stand before you today as a Sikh Canadian and recognize the important contributions that the Sikh Canadians have made to Ontario's social, economic, political, and cultural fabric. April has been chosen as Sikh Heritage Month, as it holds importance that we celebrate Vasaki this month. Uh, it provides an opportunity to remember, celebrate, and educate our future generations and society at large about Sikh Canadians and the important role that they play in communities across Ontario. The Sikh Nation is a strong, vibrant, and diverse group and trusted amongst the core of Canada's current political framework. This is a testament and to the sacrifice, support, and outreach of the Sikh Nation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Stevens, the member from Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise to recognize the 101st anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. On April the 24th, 1915, the Ottoman Empire ordered the systematic massacre of thousands of Armenians in the historic homelands. This ethnic cleansing of Armenians during World War I is recognized as the first genocide of the 20th century. Recently, Pope Francis referred to the Armenian Genocide as one of the three massive and unprecedented tragedies of the last century. Canada has always taken an active role in supporting Armenian people. During World War I, Sarah Corney, a Nova Scotia nurse, helped to rescue over 5,000 Armenian orphans. Ontario has a long history of supporting Armenian people, beginning in the 1920s, by accepting 109 boys and 40 girls orphaned from the Armenian Genocide. They are known as the Georgetown Boys and Girls. Recently, the Ontario government accepted over 10,000 refugees into the province. Since 2014, the Armenian Community of Toronto has sponsored approximately 2,300 Armenian refugees to Canada. This past weekend, Mr. Speaker, representatives from all levels of government attended the annual Armenian Genocide Commemoration organized by the Armenian Community Centre of Toronto. The com commemoration 
honour and remember both the victims and, and survivors. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the Armenian community for ensuring the memory of Armenian genocide is shared with future generations. On this annual remembrance, we need to renew our resolve to stand united for truth, justice and human rights, both at home and abroad. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements.